Jumping into restoring a classic card can most certainly be a challenge, but those challenges help mold you and your skills into being a better gearhead. For example, my dad's 1968 Dodge Charger. This one has been quite a hands-on build from day one. He started out with minimal knowledge of putting a charger back together, and now he's doing a complete overhaul of these original seats. For the first time, might I add. Follow along as we turn these tired and crusty seats into a new shiny set for the final cherry on top of this restoration. So they match, they're 100% original style, right? They're, they're an original style, yes. This is what you're going to be sitting on. And then the back of the seat will come down. Look how freaking nice that is. That's that's just like like an original charger. So that's what it's gonna somewhat look like. You can see how these are instead of being flat like the original, bolstered up and still look gives it that original kind of look to it. So if we come over to the old one. This is a mess, but if you look at how the old charger seat was made here, this has all been swollen up. The, the, the foam is all swelled from, from being in the car and getting wet. It's probably out in the junkyard for 25 years. But imagine this, but then having a bolster, instead of it being flat like the original Charles uh, charger seat, this is going to have a bolster so it holds you in the seat a lot better and so are the sides are going to be up here. Those are going to be super cool. They're going to be really nice for a road trip. Well, the, the thing is it's going to stay as close to the original as possible, but also give you a little bit of modern tech with just having the bolsters in. It's just, it's going to look absolutely phenomenal in this car. Is there a major price difference in doing bolster versus original? It wasn't much different in the price. Uh, I, I mean, I think it was like $400 difference to go ahead and get the bolsters. And you can get them bolstered for the original seat frames. Yeah, I think you're, you're going to spend like $1,000 for all original, and I spent $1,400 for the bolster. So To be more comfortable in the long run. Absolutely. Because I'm building this to drive. You know, this is going to be my my driver. I'm going to I'm going to drive it all around, and you know, it's not a it's not a big show car. I want to make it a a car to drive around, jump in, throw you the keys, go to the grocery store, go to the corner store and get some beer, whatever, you know? It's gonna be badass. Today's the day where I attempt to tear down my 1968 Dodge Charger bucket seats and see if I can actually repair them and make them work. Uh, I've tore down the driver's side and it's not in very good shape. It wasn't in good shape when I started and I, I looked at it and I, I didn't think it was going to be in, in really good shape. So what I'm going to do, as you can see here, seat back is actually rusted out on the back here. The spring's broken. Um, I see on the bo seat bottom, not in too great a shape. But I do like working with metal and I'm fairly certain that I could get this workable. I'm going to take some parts and pieces off an old seat that I have. So I think the springs will still be able to be transplanted. I'm going to try to do that and try to make this seat bottom and the seat back work. I'll show you right here, definitely rust holes here. I can replace this whole bottom of this plate with a different piece of metal, bend everything back. The sliders actually do work, so that's cool. This side, no, so, not so hot. Um, see the holes. We can put some sheet metal in here. We can actually make these work. I'm going to go ahead and start tearing down this uh, passenger side seat and see how bad that is and then we'll get all this in the bead blast cabinet. What I found on the other seat is I want to try to take out all the smaller screws first and get all your beauty pieces off. And you definitely don't want to throw any parts away. This is very, very important. Even if a part needs to be replaced, don't throw it away. Because it, it's actually a very good road map to putting things back together. All right, seat back. Because all these are, are kind of like a cardboard or a fiberboard. So they're not very weatherproof. 
got these metal tabs in here. You got to hand it to the Mopar guys, man. They did a lot of design work. Sometimes when I look at it, it seems like it could be a lot easier, easier, easier done a different way. Now on this side, the bolts are coming out looking like brand spanking new almost. I did not have that same luck with the driver's side. Surprisingly, they work. Everything still works, so I'm, I'm going to make this for sure. Pretty cool. Although we could easily settle for some racing seats or low backs that we can buy online, we just absolutely love the interior on these chargers. And since getting reproduction seats really isn't an option and buying good used ones is outrageously priced, we accepted the challenge to restore the ones we have with an updated upholstery kit instead. Wow, fully intact. This actually should go right right back together really easily bead blast get a nice coat of black paint on it and I can take this right to the upholsterer and he'll be so happy to put the new upholstery on on this nice of a, a seat bottom whether you have charger seats or not we really hope that if you take anything away from this video let it be the fact that you can 100% do this yourself this is literally james's first time doing this and i gotta say now i even feel comfortable doing this to other seats that i currently have literally all you have to do is get out there and get wrenching it's actually coming apart pretty easy compared to the other one so much better shape so it's going to be really, really nice. This this is going to turn out really nice. Really happy with this passenger side. All of this, the integrity of this whole seat bottom and seat back on the passenger side is in excellent shape. And we still got the manufacturer's number in there, the tag. Pretty cool. We'll get all this burlap off and we'll get these over the bead glass cabinet. If you don't have access to a sandblasting cabinet, you can easily find a small at-home one at Harbor Freight or online, or you can even head over to a local sandblasting company to get the job done. Working on the charger seat sliders uh, and seat mounts, as you can see here, very, very rusty on the bottom. Both the driver sides uh, are rusted out, so I'm having to replace them with some metal that I've cut out of some shelving. Uh, it seemed like the right type of metal, and I'm going to pre-drill my holes, because all I'm going to do is through bolt. I'm not going to mount the bolts on the seats and have them pop in like the factory would, but I'm going to put this on, uh, and cut out this old rust, and then install this piece right here, and we should have no issues. Although these seats aren't reproduced, you can still buy components that are. The original style seat brackets are readily available online. James is just a fabricator at heart, so he just knew he could save a buck or two by salvaging the originals. I've got my passenger side sitting here, and it's in pretty good shape. So I'm just matching up the holes and making sure that I've got the holes lined up correctly. They look pretty good. And then I'm just checking to see where I'm going to weld this into place. That should work very, very well. And then we'll grind all the rest and make it look perfect after I'm done. Even though this isn't perfect, once it's bead blasted and painted, I don't think you're really going to be able to tell a difference. All right. 
This is our passenger bucket for the 68 Charger. And as you see, it turned out absolutely awesome. It's going to be a beautiful seat and a very easy one to recover for my upholstery guy. Uh, everything's been bee blasted. We rattle canned it, got it all looking brand new. Our next task is to try to make these look like those. Okay, I'm at the point where I've beat blasted the driver's side charger seat, the bottom of it anyway. And I want to try to start repairing these springs. This is the passenger side, and it just amazes me how nice the passenger side is compared to the driver's side. Uh, everything is just completely rotted. The outer rim, as you can see here, this has a nice outer rim. I've got to reconstruct these sides, both these sides. And I have already kind of constructed one, as you can see here. And that's going to go in this area. And I'm just going to weld this right on top of the existing what's left of the outer ring, what I'm calling the outer ring. And that's going to go on top and I'll make all that fit really nice. Uh, one, one of my concerns is this, all of these springs are put on to this ring and onto the, and onto the base here. Uh, they're, they're hooked in there with these uh, type of steel bands and these bands wrap around the springs and I think whenever you're compressing the springs and you're going on it it's allowing the springs to rotate um, so my concern is I'm going to be welding this all back together and I'm not sure how that's going to work uh, I'm, I'm just basically going to find out I don't have any of these clamps uh, I don't know how I could salvage them off another seat because most of them are all rusty so I'm just going to spot weld everything back together and, and get it uh, really good and solid and then see how the springs work and hopefully it gets us by. And this is the back seat for the 68 Charger. And as you can see, we took all the padding off, we took all the covering off, and I don't have much left. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do some magic. I'm gonna make a little magic trick here, ready? Abracadabra, boom, just like that. We got a brand new seat, or seat bottom. Not really, this came out of our 1969 Super B. And the Super B had a perfect back seat in it, and all those B bodies from 68 through 70 have the same back seat. So we're not gonna need the back seat in the Super B, we're gonna use it in my charger. All the repairs done, and we got our seat frames all ready to go over to Coastal Headliners over in Savannah to Richard and let him do his magic on these things and install our legendary seat covers. Now here's a fair warning, upholstery work can be a hurry up and wait game. Those guys are doing God's work, so if you feel tempted to continue wrenching on your project, I highly encourage that you do, but do not. I repeat, do not do it like my dad does here. Cue the impatient dad syndrome. I am so tired of waiting to put you in. You're going in your home today. This should just lift up, sink it down in, put a couple of bolts into the headers that have hanging on the sides, one's on the fender and one's on the master cylinder over here with a piece of wire. And we should be able to sink this right in. I got the motor and this transmission as a package deal. I mean, everything's been repainted. It's all really clean. So I'm pretty sure this is completely rebuilt, just like the guy said. Uh, 
This is a new torque converter. And what I'm gonna do is try to put this in and I need to get the three clicks in as I'm turning it clockwise. So I'm hoping that I don't have to turn the transmission up on end to get those three clicks to slide into this torque converter. I'm gonna try to get the three clicks right now. All right. So I'll put it up on its end and see if I can't do it that way. Sure. So I must have bypassed the first one and went through the second one and then down into the third one because this is definitely all the way in. Okay, I just put that transmission on that board and on that jack by myself. I don't recommend that. You guys out there, please get some help when you're doing this. This is not a one man job. I'm doing it by myself because it's Christmas Eve and Caroline, her down in Florida with Jeff partying without me. That's okay. I'm partying without them. So stupid. Ugh, I love my dad, especially when he's not squished by a transmission. I know he's been staring at this car for a while, but don't be such a darn doomwad, dude. The engine sitting in the engine bay. Uh, unfortunately, I've got some fitment issues with the headers that we have. Uh, I'm just gonna enjoy the look of this engine sitting in my engine bay and finish up this sour pickle beer that John and Bev sent us from Kentucky. Definitely do not recommend trying to put a transmission in a B-body Mopar by yourself laying on the ground. It really sucks. Shabam! These are fancy. Picked them up today from the old upholstery shop and it's ready to rock and roll. You know, I was a little hesitant about the whole bol bolster idea, but these are slick. Oh yeah, if we're going around any kind of corners or anything like this, it's going to hold us in the seat way better. Oh, you're going to corner this? Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no, these are these are beautiful. I'm actually very happy with these. When I saw the quality of material they used, I was really stoked to see these wrapped on here. And the fact that you did so much work to get these seats to where they are now is a little insane. But honestly, it, your hard work paid off. Well, I think there's other people out there that have the same problem. Whatever car they're working on, they're going to be taking seats apart and having the same issues where the springs are broken, not looking good. What I did was transplant some old springs into the seats and actually make them work. I would rather spend the money on legendary car interior than actually spending the money on new old stock seat backs and seat bottoms. You know, I would have had to skimp on the upholstery. So I like having a nicer upholstery and then repairing what we had. And you know me, I like making old things work, so. Well, you work, so. <laughs> no, seriously though, what I really enjoyed watching about this though, and like watching you really do this, is this can really apply to any seats because fundamentally most seats, even now, but really back 
in this period of time, they were all fundamentally the same, had the same kind of weird S-shaped springs, um, were all pretty good quality steel as long as they weren't rusted out. So they're really forgiving and I feel very confident that I can take this and put it into a different application, whether it's charger related or not. Now we just gotta get them in the car. I'm excited about that. <laughs> these are nice, very plush. Yeah. Hey, those springs are really working out too. Yeah, and these bolsters, I mean, corner of the world needs. I'm gonna be doing donuts in this thing and you're gonna be sitting pretty. <laughs> oh my God! Tune in next time where we get this thing running and driving. That's really